Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from Step by Step Painting, and this acrylic painting tutorial is going to show you how to paint a manatee with acrylics on an 11 by 14 inch canvas. So this is a little bit of an advanced painting, however you can simplify this. So there's a lot of shading in this with the, the grays, the darks, and the lights. Um, to simplify this, you don't have to actually render him that much. You can just make sure the kind of the lighter areas of like where the the snout and the arm are are lighter and then the other areas around that are darker and you can do a little bit of highlighting where the wrinkles are um, but you don't have to go as in depth at the shading if it looks a little bit intimidating and there is a tracer for this as well that you can use the transfer to your canvas so you don't have to do the drawing portion either Let's go over colors and brushes. So there's six colors in this painting. You can use neutral gray value five. If you don't have that gray, you just mix black and white together to make kind of a medium gray color. Titanium white, Mars black. There's phthalo blue, Coker's green hue permanent, and turquoise blue. I used four different brushes for this. I used a one inch flat brush. So if you don't have the one inch flat, you can use the three quarter flat. That one was only used for the background, nowhere else. This 12 bright brush is optional. I found this a little helpful when filling in the gray of the manatee. It's kind of a larger brush and um, kind of fills it in faster. I used a lot of the number four round brush. This is the Princeton VeloTouch round brush. And I used this eight round specifically for the point so that I can do some fine detail work with this. This is a long eight round from Princeton VeloTouch. If you don't have this brush, just any little detail brush or even a black paint pen for some of the fine black lines on the manatee could be helpful. I also used a white Posca paint pen, and that one was really helpful for the bubbles. If you look at the bubbles, there's the um, outline of the bubbles is a fine white line. And in order to achieve that, I used the white paint pen. So this is the really fine tip paint pen. Um, it says 0.7 millimeters, so it has a really fine tip to it. If you don't have this, you can use a tiny detail brush and white paint. And so that was helpful, even for some of the whiskers in the manatee, that was helpful. So let's go ahead and get started. I have my 11 by 14 in a vertical format and I'm using the one inch flat brush. I'm loading it in the water, kind of getting the excess water out of there. And we're gonna start at the bottom of the canvas with our darkest colors. So the background is a blend of these four colors. I have turquoise, thalo blue, Mars black, and titanium white on my palette. So we're gonna start from dark and work our way to light. So on the bottom of the canvas, we're just going to paint about an inch area of this black. I have a little bit too much water on my brush, so it's making that um, black a little bit too watery, but that's okay. So you're only going to go up about an inch. You're going to wipe the brush off and grab your phthalo blue. So we are still going to achieve this really dark color by blending this phthalo blue in it. So you can leave the very, very bottom slither of that black, but get this to blend to blue. So it should be turning blue and it should not look solid black as you work your way up. In this whole background, we're doing this curve. This curve is like curving downwards, and it's going to keep blending. It's going to get lighter and lighter until it gets to a very pretty light aqua color at the very top where that sun is shining through the water. So let's go up about three inches, three to four inches. Let's rinse the brush off and let's dry it and let's grab our phthalo blue so that we have more of this pure blue color without that black. But let's blend it down into our dark color. Go up about an inch with that phthalo blue, and then without rinsing your brush, grab your turquoise, and let's do the same thing. Start a little bit above that, do your curved paint stroke going all the way across the canvas, 
and let that blend gently with your blue. Phthalo and turquoise blend so nicely together. It's a very common color I use in a lot of these underwater paintings. Let's go up a little bit further with this turquoise, since turquoise is like the main color in this ocean background, so we want to use a lot of it. We're going to go up past the halfway point of this, and we're just going to keep going and keep painting in this curved direction. I'm going to grab a little bit more of that blue and kind of blend some of this blue at the bottom. So I say this a lot with blending. You don't need to over blend your paint colors. It's okay if, see how that streak of blue in there is not blended all the way with that turquoise? That is okay. Gives it some really pretty color variation. When you're past the halfway mark, grab your white. Now, if your brush is overloaded and this white isn't even showing up, you can always rinse and start over or wipe the brush off. But we wanna start getting this turquoise to blend to a lighter color. So grabbing that white, blending that in by doing this curved stroke thing, that white is going to blend very nicely with that turquoise. We're gonna keep doing that curved direction, but try not to over blend your color. So it should be getting light, and you see those like streaks of white in there? It gives that really, pretty like the light is shining through that water at the very top so keep going keep adding more white to your brush at this point I'm not loading any other color on my brush besides white and again if yours is not getting lighter just go ahead and rinse the brush and load it with just the white at the very top of this it should be a light aqua it's not going to turn to pure white at any point in this painting but it is going to look very very light so keep blending up and see how that's not blended all the way? There's the streaks. Don't give it that perfect gradient look, and that's kind of okay. We want it to make it look like there's light shining through the ocean at the very top of this painting. So at this point, our entire canvas should be covered. It might be tempting to go back and blend some areas. You can, but again, we don't want to over blend it. We don't want it to all turn the same color. I am going to wipe the brush off instead of rinsing it and load some more titanium white on my palette. I really want to create more of the look of the light shining through the water and I'm going to do that by just loading my brush in white and nothing else. So I wiped all that extra turquoise off, load that in the white, and I'm going to use the very tip of the brush to create some um, See how these paint strokes are thinner? Like so for the background, I was using the full width of the brush. Now I'm just using the tip of the brush to create thinner paint strokes. Still going in a curved direction. And I'm not going all the way across the canvas. I'm doing curved lines, not going across the canvas, just in the kind of the middle area of that. And I'm creating this very simple illusion that the light is reflecting inside the water. And I'm gonna take this and even go down into some, some of that dark area. I'm not gonna go all the way to the bottom. I don't wanna lose that very dark black, um, navy blue color at the very bottom of the canvas. So I'm only gonna go down to maybe about the, the part where the turquoise and the blue blend, a little bit extra at the top. So you're using just the tip of the brush to create those thinner lines and that creates your illusion of the water shining, or the light shining through the ocean water. When you are done with the background, you're gonna to need to let this dry before going on to the next step. In the next step, we will be drying the manatee with a piece of white chalk. There's also a traceable template for this, so you're welcome to trace this. Print out the template, trace it with graphite paper or white graphite paper, and you don't have to do the drawing portion with me. You can skip ahead. On the tutorial directions, I give you a little bit of tips for how to transfer that to the canvas if you're doing it that way. If you're drawing this with me, get a regular white piece of chalk. I like that the chalk shows up against the dark background. And it could be erased with a wet paintbrush. So upper left area, we're going to start by drawing the snout of the manatee. And I'm going to do kind of this upside down curvy, almost like a heart shape without the, the tip at the top, like an upside down heart. 
but in the center of that there's another extra lump and then under that is a kind of smiley face line for the mouth so it's like an upside down heart with no tip at the top three bumps instead of two and then another curve for the mouth the head is a circle shape so it's almost like I'm drawing a circle right behind the snout but it's kind of off-centered and pushed more to the right a little bit so like pretty much draw a circle and stop at the snout and then start sketching the back so I'm going to start from that circle draw a very large curved line for the back and then as I approach kind of the bottom area of the ocean I'm going to curve outwards and sketch the tail so I changed this tail later when I painted in because it's more of a flat tail and not more, it's not really like a mermaid style tail um, but I did draw it that way so it curves inward a little bit and then curves up and then we can do the belly so start just to the left of the mouth under the snout curve it outwards and then it goes narrow as you approach the tail and it connects to the tail area so it kind of curves inwards and draw his left flipper so this one is going to kind of bend down at a um, almost a 90 degree angle bending down so the base of that's a little bit narrow and then it gets a little bit wider and curved on the end of the flipper and then the flipper on the right is going to just be on the side of his body kind of the same thing a little bit narrow at the base and it's very rounded on the end we can draw some of the wrinkles so I'm just going to take these two lines curve them kind of outwards a little bit and then inwards and then over here on the back I'm going to start at that line where that circle is and I'm going to draw a few just two more um, wrinkle lines so you're just kind of curving it slightly outside of the line and then curving it down so those wrinkle lines will help us when we paint to know kind of the direction of the paint strokes that we're going and we can do two curvy lines in the middle just above the snout for more wrinkles and then two little ovals for the eyes. So ovals are kind of going diagonally inwards towards each other. And then little nostrils. I just kind of redrew the snout too, but then two little nostrils. And then you can draw some of the whiskers. So there is our manatee drawing with the chalk. It might look messy and sketchy, but as we paint that in, the chalk will erase any leftover chalk. Will erase with a soft um, baby wipe or a wet paintbrush. So let's go ahead and get started with the painting portion of the manatee. So let's use the color Nutri Gray Value 5 and a number 4 round brush. You'll also need Mars Black and Titanium White because we'll be doing some shading and highlighting with the black and the white. But for now let's just start with the gray and I started at the bottom and let's start kind of outlining the bottom area of his tail. So I'm just going to take this, kind of outline the shape. I'm going to change the shape of this tail so it's not more like a mermaid tail. It is flat at the bottom. So instead of it going curved like this, I'm going to take it and make it go more flat. It's going to go more like this. I'm going to fill this bottom tail area and so I'm outlining it and then as I'm kind of filling in the shape I'm going to make my paint strokes go in the direction of the shape. I am going to start introducing a little bit of black into this so that it can blend on the canvas before this gray dries. I'm just going to add a little bit more gray in here gonna fill it in a little bit add a little bit of black to your brush you only need a tiny bit of black and at the very bottom I'm just gonna do these 
paint strokes that are curving in this direction and it's blending with that gray. So that gray is not dry. So a little bit of that black is going to do wet on wet blending. I'm going to grab more gray, kind of do this expressive paint stroke thing, basically just kind of scribbling your strokes and let that blend on the canvas, but not over blend that. So we have a little bit of shadowing already on the bottom of his tail or her tail and bring that up start outlining the back i'm gonna actually switch to this is the 12 bright so this is where i kind of use this other brush this is the 12 bright brush optional you can actually paint the entire manatee with the round brush and not even need this brush but this bigger brush is going to kind of cover more area faster and so i'm going to load that in the gray and I'm going to use the, the tip of the brush to outline the shape. So outline the back as well. So I get that shape defined and then we can start filling it in. I've got a teeny bit of black, but not too much black. I'm going to take this, bring that up. It's going to blend with my gray. And see right here, that's where my wrinkles are. Look how I changed the direction of that paint stroke to that curve. So I outlined, but then my paint stroke direction is going inwards, curved. Right here, this direction is going this way. I'm going around the shape of that flipper. Don't want to lose that shape, so I'm going around it. That flipper is going to be painted a lighter color so it stands out. Gonna wipe that brush off and actually go back to my number four round and load some more gray on my palette. I'm actually going to paint that flipper so that I don't lose that shape. So I'm gonna set this 12 bright down because that's too big of a, of a brush for the flipper. So with the gray, and I'm gonna mix white into it because I need that to be lighter. I need it to stand out because everything around it is a darker gray color. And if I do the flipper dark gray, we're not gonna see it. So lighter gray by putting white and gray together. Both white and gray are on my brush. So kind of double load it. You can outline the shape of the flipper, just kind of drying it with the paintbrush. So we get that shape defined and then we can fill that in solid. I'm using white and gray and I'm just letting the white and gray kind of gently blend together. It has variations of gray without over blending that all the way. So I'm just going over that, making sure all that's covered. Taking a little bit of that white and kind of outlining the edge of it without painting it in to get that shape defined. So there's the flipper. It's light colored, it stands out. And let's load our brush in our gray. So I didn't wipe the brush off. Now it looks lighter and that's okay. So this is that white that was still on my brush and the gray. I'm gonna start painting the rest of this manatee. So under the snout area, and then over here where the wrinkles are, just taking my paintbrush and curving it in the direction of the wrinkle of how we drew it so it's lighter. It's going over that kind of darker layer. I'm done with my bright brush. I'm gonna actually rinse that off, set it to the side because I'm not gonna need that right now. All the rest of this is the round brush for some of the detail work in there. So let's get back to the round brush and the gray. So this is still the neutral gray, with maybe a little bit of white on it right here, curving those wrinkles. Don't go over the flipper area, go around it. And a teeny bit of black there. I want to make darker color, a little bit of water to kind of loosen that paint. So this is gray with a little bit of black. So this area that's under his snout needs to be a little bit shadowy. So I'm taking this and I'm making these paint strokes go 
this direction curved and we can start filling the head the head is gray with a little bit of black and I'm going to outline the shape of the head and go in a curved direction and I'm going to go around his snout the snout's going to be a lighter color just like we did a lighter color for the flipper so these are curving around I can grab white on my brush and maybe make this a little bit lighter right here in the middle but it it's not going to get too light because I need that snout to be a lighter color. So a little bit of white in there, curved direction, kind of let that blend. And I'm going to go back to dark and shadowy right under the snout area as a little bit extra black for a little bit of shadow right under here. Curved direction with the paintbrush. So again, I mentioned earlier in this video that you can simplify this. You don't have to render it as much with the shadows and the lights. You can do gray with maybe a little bit of blending of the black and the white, but just make sure that when you paint the flipper and the muzzle, that those are lighter, that they can stand out from the rest of the gray of the manatee. So I'm gonna take my lighter colors, so a little bit of white with the neutral gray, pretty much the same color we use for painting the flippers. This is white to get it lighter. I'm going to outline the shape of the muzzle area, mouth area, outlining the shape and then fill it in with curved paint strokes going in the direction of the shape. So there's that third lump in the middle. And just filling it in. You don't have to over blend. So you see streaks of like the darker gray in there that don't blend all the way with your lighter color. It gives it more of that painting look versus like a coloring book look. But if you like to blend it in all the way, you can. And then that little same color of the mouth, that curved area. And I want to leave a little bit of an opening. See how you see that little bit of an opening right there under the mouth? For the inside of his mouth so we can get make him look like he's smiling and happy with the black and right there I wanted this to be kind of dark and outlined right here too so those three bumps that we drew in the beginning those are now outlined to a little bit of a darker color I'll just kind of take this and blend it in without making it too dark. It still needs to be a lighter color than the rest of the area so it stands out. So now we have, we can see we have lighter areas, darker areas. We can see the flipper, it stands out, the muzzle, the mouth stand out. And take a little bit of white, make that mouth a little bit lighter, and go back right here. A little bit lighter at the top. Again, you don't need to render this further. You can keep it simplified. And I'm making it just slightly lighter at the very, very top. Going back and kind of re outlining that. So later on, um, we'll do some thin black outlines to help with that. And let's keep going with this. So let's kind of accent some of the wrinkles here. So I'm going to take my lighter color. I'm going to go back and I'm going to go back over these. So see how that little curve kind of goes outside that line a little bit with the back. I'm taking that curving and then bringing that down. Oh, it's if it's too light, go back, and make it darker. So it shouldn't be too light. It should just be enough to kind of let that wrinkle stand out. Another way you can get those wrinkles to stand out is just to do the regular gray without highlighting it and then later on going back and doing some black outlining in that area. So 
so we can paint our other flipper. So this guy over here on the left does not have to be lighter because we don't need to kind of make it stand out. It's not overlapping anything. Um, but I am going to make it kind of um, a darker color since everything over here, the under part of his um, belly, under the head area, under the mouth area is still dark. So I'm going to just kind of make this also dark. So just neutral gray, maybe a little bit of black in there. Outline the shape and fill it in. This. I'm going to grab a little bit of black and I'm going to shade this part right here. Do it a little bit. These lines right here, the wrinkle lines with the black, just kind of dragging that brush curving inwards and then outlining this far left edge of the belly with the black so that that stands out a little bit and is a little bit of shadow. So I'm taking the far left curve of the belly and the left part of the tail, actually kind of loosening this up a little bit. So this is dark gray. It's the neutral gray with a little bit of black. So right here, I'm going to outline this as well. So that curves inwards a little bit. And then I'm outlining the far left part of the tail. This also helps to really define the shape down here. I'm going to take this, maybe add some shadow in here. So taking this and dragging it in towards the left. So this tail, the gray layer on here is dry. So it's not blending with that gray that's there. It's just kind of adding darker shadowy layer. And if you want, you can go back and add some more lighter gray and blend that in even further. But I did so far left part of the tail, a little bit darker shadowy and outlined far part of the belly. The line is outlined with a few wrinkle lines going inwards. The far right part of his flipper here, I'm going to kind of outline with a darker gray. Outline right here, so that gives him a little bit of shadow right there. And that did blend with that gray, although you can go back and add more gray to blend it better. This far left part of his flipper, I know we wanna leave this light so it stands out, but I'm still gonna add a little bit of shadowing in here. So we gotta be careful. So it's already getting dark and we don't want that. I'm gonna have to fix this so it's lighter. But I wanna, wanted to outline the far left part of the flipper. And if we accidentally get too dark, we'll have to just go back and add light. So see how that's not standing out anymore? We can grab more white and undo that so that we just have a dark outline on the the left side of the flipper. We may have to let this dry a little bit before going back. And it's lightening up again. It's a little white. Make sure the shape doesn't get lost. Add a little bit of light highlight on the far right part of the body. So kind of like what we did with the black on the left part, we're gonna do the same thing, but with the, the white, but we don't want it to be too bright. So this is kind of just gray and white on there and then outlining, but then also kind of doing those wrinkle lines in there. Just take a little bit of black. I'm going to outline some of these wrinkles, so the line in between some of those wrinkles. And a little bit of dark on the top of his head. Next, we are going to get the eyes painted in. So let's rinse our four rounds. And so you can do this with a tiny detail brush. You can do this with a paint, black paint pen, Sharpie. I'm just taking my four round and adding a little bit of black right there on the tip of the brush because I know these are going to be small little detail paint strokes. And I'm going to do one little oval in the kind of mid left region. And these ovals are going diagonally towards each other and they're pretty much the same size. Two little 
ovals going diagonally. If you're worried about the spacing, they're about an inch and a quarter apart in distance. And then we can use the same black, same brush for the nostrils. So these are a little bit closer together and it's kind of like a comma shape. So there's like a little oval also going diagonally towards each other. They're closer together. And then I'm going to do like a little tiny line connecting to those ovals. They are about a half an inch apart in spacing. So that a little bit, little line on the inside and a little line on the inside, like a little comma shape. Next, I'm going to do the whisker details. So this one, I definitely want to use the uh, eight round brush for this. I'm gonna set my four round aside and get my eight round. It's the brush that has the really tiny point to it. So you can use a black paint pen for this, a tiny detail brush. It just needs to be able to create very thin lines. First, we're gonna do dots. So I'm gonna load just the tip of this brush in the black and do little dots, detail work for the whiskers. I'm gonna do this on both sides. So there are gonna be white dots too, but I'm gonna do the black ones first. And then on each of the dots, I'm just gonna take this and drag my brush outwards to create the very thin whisker line. You barely uh, let this brush skid the surface of the canvas to create that very tiny thin line on both sides. I'm gonna wipe the brush off and grab white so I can do white whiskers same thing not all of these have to be attached to a dot and i can always go back and paint more dots so that created some gray since the black wasn't rinsed off and do little tiny lines coming down from the bottom of his mouth and if the eyes are dry we can do the little white highlight dots inside of the eye. If the black is too wet, you may want to kind of wait to let that dry. But I'm going to take my white and I'm going to do kind of a larger oval towards the top. Kind of hugs the top part of the black oval. Same thing over here. And again, these are both kind of going diagonally towards each other at the top. And then one tiny dot below that, so diagonally and diagonally below that. So that's kind of all we need to do with the eye. I'm going to add an eyelid next. I'm going to load the brush in the gray. So there's white and gray on my brush, so this is going to show up kind of a lighter gray. And just on the very top, I'm not overlapping the eye or anything, I'm just painting one curved stroke just on the top of both of the eyes to create an eyelid. And then there's those wrinkle lines in between both of those eyes. I wanna kinda of lighten that up so kind of a lighter gray than what that gray is already. So there's gray on my brush and I loaded just a little bit more white and I did three curved lines in between both of those eyes. And then on the far left right here, I created another wrinkle line with that lighter gray going inwards. I'm gonna just add a teeny bit of white down here, define that mouth a little bit more. And next I'm gonna do some outlining. So with the eight round and the tip of the brush, add a little bit of black, and I'm going to outline the bottom edge of his mouth right here, just a little thin black line. We don't have to go over the whiskers or anything, but just defining that and defining this line right here, the bottom of his mouth. And then I'll, I can outline those wrinkles again, with the black and a little bit of outlining over here on the left side of the flipper. Wherever you think there's part that just needs to kind of stand out a little bit better, Sometimes it just helps to kind of loosely outline your object. I don't like to outline everything. 
just like to outline some parts, especially the parts that are kind of dark, like right here, outlining the left side of his belly and then some of the wrinkles. And then this line that goes inwards a bit, I can re-outline the left side of his tail. And again, this is just pure black that I'm loading my brush into. I can do white outlining. So specifically on the right side of the manatee where it's lighter. So our left side of the manatee is darker, the right side's lighter where we have the most of our highlights. So I'm taking my white and you can also do this with a white paint pen. And I'm just going back over. So some of these wrinkles I already outlined with black but I'm just gonna do a white outline too, just on the far right edge. So that's gonna kind of make it look like the light from the water is kind of hitting the, the edge of the manatee so it's lighter. So just on the right sides, maybe a little bit over here on the top of his snout area. So we can be done with the painting of the manatee and I recommend waiting for it to dry before cleaning up your chalk lines. So I'm actually using a baby wipe. Um, I get asked about what kind of baby wipes I, mean, I use to wipe the chalk off. This is just a Walmart brand, Parents' Choice. Um, some have said that the paint is lifting off when you wipe the lines. You just wanna make sure you're doing this very gently. You're not lifting any paint off, but if it's still lifting too much paint, you can just use a clean, wet paintbrush for this. You don't have to use the wipe. So we got all the chalk lines cleaned up and I'm going to go back and update these wrinkles once again with the black. You don't have to do this. Like I said, you can simplify and you don't need to render this all the way through. Do a few more little dots. A few more little dots on this side. Go back and do some white dots. And a few more white dots on the left side. Now we can be done with our manatee and move on to the seaweed. So this is a fun part. We get to play around with different seaweed color variations in the green to kind of fill up the rest of the ground areas. So it's not just the manatee in the painting. And we can do some fun bubbles as well. So this is Hooker's Green Hue and I am going to mix it with some phthalo blue for some of the darker colors. And I'll be using titanium white as well for some of the highlights of it. So let's start with our number four round brush and let's mix green and blue together. This is going to create a dark kind of teal color. And if you want, you can add a teeny bit of water in there to kind of loosen that. So I am just going to paint a wavy line and we can ha have fun with this brush by changing the pressure. So I can start my seaweed so it's kind of thinner at the top or I can start it so thin at the top and then press down. And when you stroke down, you wanna press down on your brush and that's gonna make your, th your line thicker. So these seaweed plants are thinner at the top. They don't really go to a point, but they're thinner at the top and they get kind of thicker at the bottom. And you wanna create a variety of heights and direction in your seaweed to kind of make it look like they're flowing in the water. 
the dark is going to look dark and shadowy, especially in this dark area of the ocean. And that's kind of what we want to create some depth by creating some darker shadowy seaweed pieces. Now we can go and lighten up some of these later. So we want to kind of work around the tail. I didn't want anything overlapping the manatee. I didn't want to mess up my hard work by painting seaweed over him. Although if you want to paint seaweed over him because you kind of want to disguise areas that you maybe messed up, you can do it that way too. Um, so let's do maybe a tall guy over here and make him wavy. Press down on the brush to get that thicker stroke. Let's play around with the white color. So add a little bit of white on your brush and I can go in there, kind of highlight my seaweed plant. So see how it lightens it up. So I'm just kind of doing that wavy line in there and just kind of letting that blend with that green that's already on my brush and that green that's still wet on the canvas. So it doesn't really matter what side you put the white highlight line on, but I'm just doing it on a few areas and that's going to give the seaweed this kind of glowing, glistening look where it's only light in some areas and then dark in others. So we can continue this and paint more seaweed lines. So you can be minimalistic about this. You don't have to do as many or you can do a whole bunch. I almost introduced like a pink color in this to do a coral, but decided to keep the palette um, to a minimum of six colors. So if you wanted to do some coral plants, you can kind of look up pictures of coral and paint that with some pretty pinks and oranges, perhaps. Uh, we can do little leaf-like seaweed pieces, and I'll kind of show you what that looks like. I'm going to go down here, create some shorter ones without, maybe a longer one right here, but without overlapping any part of the manatee. So just take your time and kind of have fun with it. This piece, another long piece up here. Gonna go down and maybe overlap the ones down here. I'm gonna put a few lighter pieces down here in this kind of dark area, but make them short. You add just a teeny bit of water in there that helps create a nice flowing paint stroke. And a few more shorter pieces. I'm going to do kind of a, a leaf style plant down here. So that's just painting little rounded paint strokes with a line down the middle. So give something different and kind of interesting in that kind of dark area on the bottom just below his tail. So another little leaf-like seaweed piece. And we can maybe put another one somewhere else in the painting. A few little short pieces. And then we'll do like another leaf piece over here. So that's just kind of pressing your brush down to create a little rounded stroke to create simple little rounded leaf pieces for the seaweed. I'm gonna to demonstrate to you how I did the bubbles next. And so I mentioned earlier in this video that I'll be using a white paint pen. This is a very fine tip one. It says 0 0.7 milliliters, milli, millimeters, and it's the Posca. Um, you can use a regular tiny white or a tiny, tiny brush in white paint. And so all we're doing is drawing various sized circles throughout your painting. So you can do just a few bubbles if you don't want that many bubbles, or you can do a lot of bubbles. So some of these can be overlapping each other. Some are larger, some are smaller. 
Some are kind of closer and clustered together. They don't all have to be evenly spaced apart. Um, I find with the white paint pen that it doesn't come out super bright and solid, which is, it kind of works for these bubbles because we don't need super bright, solid lines for these. The fact that it's a little translucent is already helping us. Um, and then some of these bubbles we can have fun and do like a kidney bean shaped bubble so they don't all have to be perfect circles. So this bubble over here, see how it's kind of like a kidney bean shape. You can do another kind of larger one right here. So that makes it fun. And then we can go and render these bubbles in. I'm gonna start with the shadow part. So it's gonna look kind of weird at first with this, but just kind of bear with me. So this is the number four round brush and I'm using black and blue. So it's gonna look just mostly black because that black is very strong. But black and blue mixed together about equal parts and you don't need a lot on your brush. In fact, this is kind of dry brush style. So it's a little bit kind of see-through dry paint, not a thick opaque layer at all. So at the bottom kind of right or pretty much kind of like the bottom area. I wasn't very consistent with these. Um, you're just doing like this little curve on the inside of each of the bubbles. So not on the outside of the line, just on the inside part of that white line. Some of these white lines are really hard to see because of how light that pen is. But just a kind of dry, curvy stroke on the inside. My round brush is kind of giving out here. The bristles are kind of fraying out on me so it's causing my paint strokes to not be more precise. So just on the inside this guy and this guy kind of got lazy with it after a while. So each of them have a little black bluish mark on the bottom inside of the bubble. Rinse your brush and grab the white and on the top inside, we're going to do the same thing, but now we're just going to kind of make these a little bit thicker. So I'm doing a curvy paint stroke. So if it's a kidney bean one, you want to kind of curve inwards instead of outwards. But this is the inside, kind of dry brush style, but a few more kind of thicker strokes than what we did with the darker color. So right here, curvy on the inside of that kidney bean bubble shape. Dry brush style, that just means that it's kind of translucent, see-through, not a lot of paint on my brush. Ooh, that's a little bit thick, but that's okay. So you can see how that creates the highlight for the bubble. Bubbles are clear see-through, so we wanna make sure we still see a lot of that background ocean color through there. We're not painting the entire bubble white or solid we want to leave that blue still showing through but still create the illusion that it is a bubble so i'm doing these highlights i'm gonna go with another round of white and this time i'm just gonna paint a dot a little kind of almost like a curved mark more more of like a curved dot if that makes sense kind of a thicker not a dry brush type of stroke but that's going to create one final bright little pop of light that's hitting these bubbles just by doing one little bright white dot on the upper part of each of the bubbles. I'm gonna erase <laughs> this one since I didn't do anything to it so that Posca pen wasn't dry all the way and I was able to kind of lift it off really quick. And one final thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and kind of re-outline all of my bubbles with the white paint pen again without trying to smudge any of the wet paint, especially the dark part. I don't wanna mess that up. So maybe wait till that dries before doing this. 
And I'm not really outlining the entire circle. I'm just going back and mostly kind of the bottom part of the circle where it kind of got lost. So like right here, the bottom part, here the bottom part. Or if there's any part of the um, highlights that you did where it went outside the line, you can go and just kind of re-outline the entire bubble so that it's all inside. And that just gives it a little pop. So that one, I guess you can outline the entire bubble if that makes more sense to you. That really kind of helps to get the bubble lines, the shape of the bubble to stand out better. And then this was fun. So we can do little kind of popping or sparkles on the bubbles. So I'm just drawing like three little kind of diagonal lines that are sticking out from the bubbles. You don't have to do that to all the bubbles because then it would just get kind of crazy. So I outlined that one again. You can also just do simple dots. Maybe those are like little tiny bubbles, but that just adds to the really pretty variety in our bubbles that we have dots and little sparkles. These paint pens are actually helpful for signatures if you like to sign your paintings. I don't always show this in my videos because I always either forget to sign my paintings or forget that maybe you want to see how I sign my paintings. So I'm going to do this with the paint pen. You can also do this with just a, a tiny paintbrush as well, but it kind of easier to do it with the paint pen and that's it. Just the lower left part of the painting, sign, show it off. And that is it. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed learning how to paint a manatee.